So, I popped into High House Insurance to see if they could quote for my house insurance rather than using the internet. High House got a great deal. So, to celebrate, I bought a posh hairdo. It made me look beautiful, gorgeous enough to become a highly paid model. I then won Celebrity Big Brother. I had an affair with an MP. Now, I'm promoting a doll of me that says, Cool, blimey, you're well fit. <laughs> Happy things happen when you talk face to face with High House Insurance. See if we can beat your home insurance quote from the internet. Find us on the High Street Selsey or call 606 552. Hi, my name's Keith Barnes and I'd like to wish you a very warm welcome to this week's Sales Internet Radio podcast. In this week's programme, Pat Reed will be having a look around the shops as our sales shopper and she'll also be filling us in on what's happening around the village for the coming week. Hugh Graham will be talking to Kylie Scott, the sales youth worker, about some new projects that she has going on and he'll also be talking to Giles about what's happening in the garden. And finally, Hugh will close the programme with his thought for the day. Hi, I'm Pat Reed, your monthly salesy shopper. This month I've chosen another four shops which caught my eye. As I was passing Rudwick's hardware store just past the fire station when walking into the village, I noticed that they have heaters in stock. Although the weather is exceptionally mild at the moment, it is the start of autumn, so we should be planning for the winter. They're also advertising damp control crystals, which are especially helpful if you own a caravan and are parking it up for the winter. By putting some of the crystals in corners or cupboards, they will stop those places becoming damp. Of course, they can be used in all areas where damp could become a problem, so well worth stocking up with some. I was also informed that Rudwick still stock the old fashioned light bulbs, which we were given to understand would no longer be available. And for anyone who wants to give their carpets a new life, they rent out carpet cleaners by the day or half day. It's worth giving this shop a visit before travelling into Chichester, as their prices are very competitive. Across the road, I had a look inside the Selsey Emporium, which is now fully stocked with second-hand furniture of all kinds, as well as smaller household items. If you have an unwanted furniture and are not sure what to do with it, they'll pick it up and put it on show as well as market it on their website. When your furniture sells, they take 50% of the sale price, but it does solve the problem of transporting your items and they do all the work for you. They also do complete house clearances free of charge and this also includes garages, lofts and gardens so it's worth popping in and having a chat with them. Just a few doors down, I stopped for a cup of coffee at the shop, having been drawn in by the paintings in there by local artists. I'm told the paintings are changed every few weeks, and it was obvious that there is certainly a lot of talent in Selsey. This friendly venue also stocks many fair trade goods, including unique handbags, jewellery, glassware and other gifts. The shop is staffed by volunteers and my delicious coffee was only one pound. They stock speciality coffees and teas and while there treat yourself to one of their cakes as well. I only meant to call in for a few minutes but the conversation was so interesting I ended up by spending the best part of an hour there. They advertise the work and events of all the churches in Selsey and there is always someone there ready to chat. A really friendly place and a bit of a hidden gem in the slightly quieter part of the high street. Over on the east side of Selsey, I notice when passing the fruit and vegetable shop which has always been there on the East Beach Parade in Beach Road, a noticeable change in their window. I called in to see the transformation inside. They're now called Five a Day and Flowers and had a change of ownership about seven months ago. It's now owned by Nick. As well as their normal range of fresh fruit and vegetables, they now stock pet food and gardening items and have a very attractive display of gifts. I spoke to Nolan when I was there, who tells me that the gift section is going bigger soon. And as there is a family connection with Delightful Things Are Us presently in the high street, they are stocking quality items which are now in both shops. 
My eye was originally caught by their sale notice on their garden ornaments and statues, which are being sold off prior to winter. If you wait until early spring to buy these sort of items for your garden, you'll probably pay twice as much so it's worth having a look down the side of their shop where they still have some very nice ornaments and planters at sale prices. Well that's all for this month and I'll be back next month with more news and helpful hints from your Selsey shopper. Hi, these are a few of the events on in Selsey for week commencing Monday the 6th of October. On Wednesday the 8th of October, Selsey WI will be holding their meeting at the Town Hall between 2.15 and 4.30pm. Meetings are the second Wednesday of each month. For more information, telephone Shirley on 606287 or Diane on 601776. Also on the 8th, as usual on a Wednesday, the Selsey Venture Club's boutique will be open between 9am and noon and they are adjacent to the co-op. On Thursday the 9th of October, the Selsey History Society will be holding their meeting at 7.30pm in St Peter's Church Hall. This week, David Bone will be giving a talk on finds on West Beach. All friends and visitors are welcome. There is a charge of £1.50 which includes refreshments and for more information contact John Mason on 607037. On Friday the 10th of October, the Derby and Joan Club are meeting between 2 and 4pm in St Peter's Church Hall. This includes a fun bingo session and a cup of tea. These meetings are held every Friday and a venture bus can be arranged for members. For more information, contact Jill on 604187. On Saturday, the 11th of October, there is a Selsey Venture Club boutique and garage sale between 9am and noon, adjacent to the co-op. Also on Saturday, the 11th, the Selsey Scouts Charity Shop is open between 10 and noon at the Scout Hall, School Lane. On Sunday, the 12th of October, is the first autumn tabletop sale at the Selsey Centre, open to buyers at 9am and sellers at 8am. If you wish to book yourself a table, the cost is £6 for one table and £10 for two. For more information, call 603836. As usual on a Sunday, the Selsey Model Boat Club will be at the Pond at East Beach Car Park between 10am and noon. You're welcome to come and watch and any new members are always welcome. That's just a few of the main events in Selsey for the coming week. Log in for more next week. Thank you for that, Pat. As always, we go across now to Hugh, who's talking to Kylie Scott. Now, if you're the same age as me, you probably won't have heard of Kylie because... She's Selsey's youth worker, and Kylie will be talking to Hugh about some of the new projects she's got on the go for the youth of Selsey. It's Hugh Graham for Selsey Internet Radio, and I've got Kylie Scott in the studio. Kylie, if you remember, is Selsey's youth worker, and she's going to tell us about what? Uh, just the new projects that are coming up. Okay, and um, they are? They are Futures for You, which is a girls group and a boys group. It's right. based on the successful girls group that we had last year. Okay. It's being backed by the police. Uh, they've donated some money. Uh, the idea is that we engage uh, groups of young people and work with them around image, confidence, uh, maybe some life skills, uh, sexual health awareness, drug and alcohol awareness, or issues that they're facing uh, that at the minute I've got a group of year nine girls and they are just full of questions yeah. so we just want to support them and just hear what's going on for them because at the end of the day we're not young people we've got to hear it from them and we just want to respond to their needs so year nine what age is that they're I think they're 13 14 okay mm. now as I understand it we have if not the highest, but one of the highest incidents of teenage pregnancy. Yeah, I mean, that it's, it's common. You know, when I lived in Plymouth, Torquay, I think, had the, the highest number. Yeah. Um, it is unfortunate, I think, when you have low aspirations, when you haven't been successful at school, and that young girls think that all they can be is 
mums. And the thing is, you can be mums, but you can do other things as well. And that's what we want for our women, to be independent, not dependent. And oh, so so that choices. implies then, Kylie, that these pregnancies are not accidental? I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't, I don't know. Um, I think there is a myth that if you get pregnant, you're going to get a council house. Well, that... I don't think necessarily happens. I mean, housing is an issue for a lot of people. Uh, and the notion that a young person can just get pregnant and get a house, I think, is something of, in the past. Okay. However, they will be needy on the state. So we can't ignore that because if you're presenting a need, then we have a duty of care and we will look after our young people. So what's this initiative of yours doing for both boys and girls then? We well, one of our exercises. I've got a collection of magazines. We're going to do a collage and just see how images are presented to us. The the idea of what it is to be a woman, um, and just challenge some of the stereotypes. Okay. And you know why why don't we have, for example, women's football is the largest growing sport for women. Yeah. We did well in the World Cup and Arsenal, I think, uh, I don't, there's a league. You don't see it. Sometimes BBC Three plays it. But, you know, if we don't have those images that women can be in sport, they can be active, you know, instead of being passive and things happen to them, you know, I want to get it. It's quite true, uh, Kylie. Uh, the four broadsheets... I take you women's sport really seriously. So if you want to find out about women's mm. sport, then read the Telegraph, the Times, the Guardian, or the Independent. Yeah. Because they actually give it proper coverage. Yeah, but on on TV, you know, we're still not getting the visuals yeah. as much, you know. But things are changing, and we've got to recognise that change is happening. So well, we it wasn't so long that. ago that the Paralympics weren't happening either. Yeah. And suddenly, well. Now, if you if you remember Pretorius mm. and how fast he was, he's almost as fast as a, as 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 athletes that aren't in any way hampered. Mm. So I I think that eventually women's sport will become just as interesting on television. And what, you know, we, we used to have the glass ceiling. There's there's lots of talk, and there there is this idea that things have changed, but there's still pay differences for women doing yeah. the same job um, and you know we, we just yeah we need to encourage our young women to, to be who they want to be not what they think they should be so these do, do most of these girls have low self esteem I think that most women are affected with low self esteem violence against women is going up respect for women is going down so, you know, we need to teach our young boy or young men how to treat women with respect, how to get girls to respect themselves so that they get respect. I'm sure you've heard stories like this before, but in my own industry, which is journalism, and my wife's industry, which is, which is television, women have had total equality now for 30, 40 years. Mm. Uh, they do the same job as men. They get the same pay as men. Mm. They're expected to stand the same round at the bar as men do. Mm. They, they will, uh, the, the, the femininity is recognised. So men still open doors for women. Mm. But I can remember when I was lecturing at university, we had a lady who was a who was a senior lecturer there, who if you opened the door for her because she was carrying an armful of books, actually refused to go through it. And I thought, was so, that? Two ways, isn't it? Mm. So, respect for ladies. What about what about young young men? Well, this is it. You know what happens to boys when they're not sporty. How do we engage those young people in positive? I don't know. I I've got seven young girls lined up for my girls group. So far, I haven't heard from any boys. But um, yeah, I want boys to come forward and say, yeah, we want a single sex space. Uh, just talk about their issues and see what's going on for them. What do you think their issues are? Sometimes I hear young people and the idea of to man up. I think it's important to understand, you know, sort of gender and, and what expectations are. 
Um, I, th- I think, you know, you can have clever boys who are held back by their peers because it's not cool to be clever. The same with girls as well. Um, I think understanding girls, you know, I mean, all boys, but, you know, that, that time of puberty when your body's changing, you've got new feelings, it's, it's just how to... Are these groups? Great school. <laughs> are these groups you're setting up coming out of a local school? I mean, are they normally students? At, for example, the academy. Yes. So, and there'll be other schools too, won't there? Um, no, predominantly, it's, I, I'm sales as youth worker. So, I, I although I've been asked to do some other work elsewhere, generally, I I'm going to work in sales for sales okay. young people. So. What is it that you're doing that the academy staff isn't doing? I just think that there's no room in school. School has lost citizenship, PCSE, PCHE, uh, which is personal development. It's all academic. It's core subjects and options. It's geared towards GCSEs. Uh, there's no real space for a young person to explore self and the soft skills of life. So. That's why they're invited to Snack Shack, to these groups, um, and just to ask questions that perhaps they can't speak to their parents about. Maybe they get misinformed by their peers or other siblings. So it's just um, it's, it's to complement school. Um, it's not that school aren't doing it because they are flat out. I think pressure on school is enormous, on all schools. Um, this is statistics really, isn't it? You know, to be a manager of a school, it's like a business. You need your league tables, you need your, your success. It's My approach is a bit more personal. So what happened to the idea that every child counts? They, it, then, does, then, it does, it so, does. So what, what happens to somebody who has improved beyond all recognition in relationship to where they were before, but maybe not academic? Well, that's a, that's an interesting. I'm starting AQA unit awards, yeah. so I can get a, an accreditation, a certificate for young people who have experienced or showed knowledge of any work that they engage with me at. So, um, it instead of a formal GCSE where you you know you aim to get A to Cs to get into your next level. Um, we're going to work on a certificate of achievement. So it could be, uh, it could be level one kayaking. It could be communication skills. It could be cooking a meal. Um, it's just to demonstrate that they are capable of doing and capable stuff. of succeeding. Yes. Yeah. So what I found at the academy last year when I went to their celebration evening. Lots of young people were going up for their certificates of achievement and they had their CV in. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. So what we need to do and what we are doing, uh, we've been given support from the school. There are AQA Centre. Selsey Works is our uh, supporting with admin and delivery and I will be working with young people who are not in education, training or employment, age 16 to 19, and also going into school working with young people at risk of being needed. And some people just don't like school, do they? School is not for everyone, and it's going to get harder, because in a couple of years' time, it will revert back to doing the exam 100%. So this is an opportunity for any child to succeed? Yes. What we want to do is just say, actually, school is good for some people, school is a nightmare for others, but... You know, it's the only time when education is free. Young people have got an obligation to try their hardest because at the end of the day, it's taxpayers' money. But we want them to succeed because if they get a label that they're failing at the age of 15 or 16, we've got able-bodied, capable people who are disengaged from society. So we need to make sure that they're engaged, even if it's through voluntary work, community work, but having a sense of inclusion, a sense of belonging and a sense of purpose to, you know, not for myself, the penny didn't drop about education until I was 23. I was a late developer. It didn't drop with me until I was 42. (laughs) So, you know, but it's it's understanding that learning is a lifelong journey. Okay. So, now, what's this initiative called again? 
Okay, so what I've just talked about, the NEAP, so not in, in employment, training or employment, that is our tune-in project. Yeah. Um, along with Sue at Selsey Works, we've written to companies explaining about our initiative. And the idea is that we take young people out for visits. Uh, it could be Wilden Down, for example, where we do some craft. It could be, I mean, one of the exciting ones, which I might do for another group, uh, it's green power where uh, you go up to Goodwood and you have to I think they give you an engine yeah. and you have to do the body work I mean these are all ideas in the pipeline but what I want to do is have time to talk to the young person that I'm working with almost de-school them so that they're ready to learn again I just want any interest they might be interested in fishing um, they might be interested in something practical agriculture um, yeah um, I mean that's the other thing how do we make sense of the working world when they leave school what opportunities Selsey has retail it has holiday and it has agriculture hasn't and it? fishing and fishing so you know that could be if we can if we can get good links um, you know hopefully we can get local employment okay so any young person who wants to get involved in any of these programmes mm. can contact you how? Uh, if all the teachers know about me, they, all they have to do is make a, a note at school. They can come and see me at Snack Jack on Monday and Tuesday nights between 6 and 9. Yep. Uh, they can actually turn up to the group uh, if, it, if it's girls, turn up on Wednesday, if it's boys, Thursday. What time and where? Um, that's at Slack Shack Warehouse again. So that's that's the Futures for You projects. Um, uh, what I ideally want is a group and stick with that group. But if you're interested, put your name down and form another group. We're going to repeat it two or three times a year on a rolling programme. Okay. Uh, to give everyone a chance to be on it. So the Futures for You is what is on Wednesdays? And Thursdays. So girls on Wednesday. Boys on Thursdays. Yep, four to and that's six. And that, that's at the Stack Shack Warehouse? Yep. Between what time and what time? Uh, between four and six. Okay. And if they want to call you to discuss it, what was the number you said? 07462 and if you're not there, because I've noticed you are hardly ever there, Where? <laughs> on that phone number, so they can leave a message. Yes, what Hugh means to say is he's got his, my personal number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, yeah, so that's true. Okay, so that's, so that's for Futures for You. Yes, And the tuning project is what? Tuning is uh, for NEETs. We're hoping to work with up to six young people below the age of 16 and six above uh, the age of 16 but under 19 we're looking at young people who have maybe tried to go to college and it didn't work out for them uh, or felt they didn't do well at school and haven't tried going to college so we're just going to um, take them out on Fridays uh, to wherever they wish to go within reason uh, and just give them an experience because sometimes we don't realise what jobs are out there Mm -hmm. It's hard to think of what, you know, if you were to ask every person in the pub or whatever what their occupation is, sometimes you'd come across jobs that you'd never heard of. Sometimes you don't realise that you can get paid for doing that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. So, you know, generally people think of teachers because they're exposed to teachers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we want to expose them to the world of work. But work's different, you know. I mean, parents might not have contracts. That, you know, there's a lot of zero-hour contracts around. Parents might come home with, you know, going, ooh, work was rubbish, you know, and sort of... We don't promote work. Often people don't enjoy their work necessarily. So, you know, we're putting that view on that work is hard work. Um, and it's so important to get a job that you like. Absolutely. You know, you're going to spend a lot of your life doing it. Um, you, you like your work, don't you? Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> so, I do. Yeah, but I, mean, I really do. So, and I can't ever remember not wanting to go to work. No. I no. enjoy it so much that yeah. I'm, I'm very happy to do it 10 or 12 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you're that blessed, then, then life is completely changed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But you do need something. So yeah. I assume then, Carly, that not only are you looking for young people 
who are hoping to find this opportunity, you must be also looking for contacts from local firms who might like to give kids an opportunity. That would be fantastic. Um, I will be there. You know, another barrier for companies and work experience is the old health and safety and young people having to pass a certain amount of uh, criteria before they can even experience doing stuff. If there is anybody out there who is able to offer a day's shadow work, I will be there with the young person. It will be me and a young person with whoever. So we we would love to to just experience a day in the life of. Okay. And so if you've got anything on a Friday and you want us to shadow for a couple of hours or six hours, that we'd like that. Just to, just to expose young people. And that phone number again? It is 07462668008. And you are Kylie Scott. Youth worker. Okay. Yes. Thanks a lot, Kylie. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you to Hugh and Kylie there. I think it just goes to show that everybody can be successful. They just need to identify the thing that they want to be successful at. And we go across to Giles now. Who's going to update us on what's going on in the garden? All right, Giles. This is the last of the autumnal ones before we hit the winter. Uh, well, not quite. No, no, not quite. We've got another autumn. We've got another, we'll have another session of autumn first. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're rushing into winter a bit too quick. <laughs> 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 well, I don't want to rush winter in, no. so yeah, I'd much rather have autumn. <laughs> have you not noticed, Charles, that the seasons are a bit like us? I don't, I'm not going to disclose how old you and I are, mm. but I do notice that middle age lasts longer the longer the older you get. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I'd have got on with that one. That's a bit like autumn, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, late summer and autumn, early autumn. Is, is as I say, is a time what I would say of rich colour and mellow fruitfulness, as I've already discussed. Uh, autumn violets are very abounding now in the woodlands and the countryside. They're, they're very, beautiful, aren't they? They're lovely to see. Uh, butterflies and bees are very prolific now because they're feasting on all the autumn, all the autumn treats they've got arranged. Yeah. And if you're, well, I'm sure you being near the sea as near as you are. If you're, if you're, if you're, wake up in the night a bit. I'm sure you might do. Uh, sometimes you can hear curlews at night. I say you can hear them calling. It's very, it's a very enriching sort of sound, and you you can hear them calling as as they keep in touch with each other, mm-hmm. as they're actually arriving from far far away. Yeah. So, but you, you, they always often do it by night rather than yeah. in the day, and it can be quite a bewitching. I've heard all sound. sorts of sounds at night, but I wouldn't be able to identify a curry. No, but anyway, it is. They, they, they are, they are around. Um, now, if you've got any carrots, anyone lift them up. Main crop carrots, may I mean, lift them now, cut the tops off, and then store and store them in layers in deep boxes, which stand between the layers. Yeah. And then put them in a dry shed or garage. Um, How long will they keep for? Oh, they'll keep for ages. Yeah. Uh, again, up to Christmas and beyond. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they'll keep a long time. Uh, give privet and honeysuckle their second cut now, and also finish cutting any cutting that's needed on evergreens uh-huh. at this time of year. Um, window baskets, window boxes, feed basket, not window ba- baskets window boxes, containers, etc. are still, it's not nowhere near it's time to start doing the winter ones yet. Yeah. So make sure they still have a feed every week mm-hmm. and deadhead regularly and that will prolong the flowering a lot longer. Um, and then as I said last, recently, other week, if you haven't already done so, do buy spring bulbs now and start because you get a good selection still. Uh-huh. And, st- and make sure you start getting them in the ground. Uh, if you've got fuchsias in containers or mm-hmm. pots or wherever they, you know, I'm, I don't mean fuchsia shrubs. I'm talking about the yeah, I know. those container ones. Uh, again, you, they need dead heading and feeding. And um, uh, I like to mention a little fact, which is actually quite true, really. Uh, single men give ladies cut flowers for an instant effect. Yeah. 
Married men give ladies pot plants for enduring effect. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's true, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Right, so I'll see you uh, when I get back from Ireland. OK, right. Have a lovely time, and we'll <laughs> see you when you get back. Yeah, you will. Thank you very much. OK, bye-bye. Well, I have to admit, Giles, I've never been much of a gardener, but I have to say, I find your piece is so informative and so entertaining that I've become an avid listener, even when I'm not working on a programme. And finally, we go across to Hugh once again, who's going to give us his thought for the day. The best exotic Marigold Hotel is a retirement destination in India for the elderly and the beautiful. The hotel has seen better days, and if you want to see what the better days look like, you just look at the brochure which depicts a luxurious existence in Jaipur, a popular tourist destination in Rajasthan. To this city travelled a group of seven Brits, with seven reasons for making the move, although the most urgent is that the local prices make retirement possible for them. As we meet them jammed on the bus from the airport, we know that the film will be about their various problems and that the hotel will not be as advertised. We're introduced to them in the order of their billing, Judy Dench, Maggie Smith, Bill Nye and four others. Greeting them at the hotel is the exuberant and optimistic owner, Jeff Patel from Slumdog Millionaire, who has inherited the shabby inn from his late father and plans to run it himself. Little works and Dev Patel answers all complaints from his British guests by saying, Everything will be all right in the end, and if things are not all right now, it's because we are not yet at the end. Paul, in his letters to the Romans, put it rather better nearly 2,000 years ago. In verse 28, chapter 8, Paul wrote, We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That's a comforting thought when our lives seem very difficult. Well, sadly, that's all we have time for this week, except to say a big thank you to everybody involved in this week's podcast, Pat Reed, Hugh Graham, Kylie Scott, and of course, Giles. I'd just like to take this opportunity to remind you about the new monthly podcast that's going to be taking place from the 1st of October, which is called Chatterbox. And if you'd like to take part in that, then you need to contact Mike Nichols, the Salesy Information Exchange, on 201616. This is Keith Barnes saying goodbye and hope to see you again very soon.